So let's figure out how to determine the volume of a cone. And you're familiar with cones, you're familiar with ice cream cones, cone cups like snow cones or a raspa or um, maybe even a traffic cone. And this is a picture of a cone. You've got this on your notes, so kind of the basic one we're going to start with. And just making sure we understand the shape, we've done some volume with cylinders, right? And we understand cylinder is essentially a three-dimensional circle, right? The base is a circle. And a cone is the same. So the, the base shape of a cone starts out as a circle, just as it does in a cylinder. But obviously, the difference is a cone's going to go narrow as it goes up or it goes down. This one's going narrow as it goes up. So that's going to affect how we calculate the volume. Because obviously, we're getting less and less volume as we move up. If we're filling this thing up with water, start out with a lot. As we move up, less, 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 and, and that's kind of the setup there, all right? So what we do have, we will have a formula, and I want to make sure we understand the formula when we're solving for volume of a cone real quick. So let's look at that. you got a formula spot on your notes page. This is the, the formula that you get when you get the reference chart, right? So prism and cylinder at the top, we've talked about cylinders, but if you look at this one, I'll circle it pyramid or a cone, pyramid or a cone, I'll underline cone because that's what we got uh, for our uh, activity here, is going to be this. It's going to be volume equals one-third base times height. One-third capital B base times height. Interesting. We'll talk about that one-third. Don't freak out. I know it's a fraction, but we'll deal with it. So write that in your formula box. So we'll write that down it's volume equals one-third, that is the same as one over three, that one slash three, by the way, so write that down. And make sure you have the capital B. I have it underlined in green because that means something to us. It's capital B times the H. The capital B, underneath your regular formula, I think I, I want us to understand it. And so we're going to kind of, um, we're going to expand this formula a little bit. We're going to say volume equals one-third. The base of a cone, we just talked about it, is a circle. So the base, the way you find the area of a cone or a circle, I, the way you find the area of a circle is it's pi r squared. So that's why we have an underline. So the base, actually, we got to do pi r squared. We got to multiply it times the height. And then we need to get one third of it. Because as a cone goes up and shrinks, in this case, essentially, we're going to only have one third the volume that we would have like if I go backwards here on this cylinder okay it's gonna lose some volume as we go up alright so let's let's do some math and let's calculate this real quick make sure you got the formula and um, let's see again oh yeah pi is 3.14 we all know that we should have that down but make sure you have this down on your formula um, and at your your opening page here your, your cover page and let's do some math so let's solve this first one so we're going to have the formula. We know the formula is volume equals one-third. And I'm going to write this out. So we know it's pi r squared times the height. Okay. So let's fill in now. So volume equals, let's put our numbers in. Volume still equals one-third. All right. We got that down. Now pi r squared, pi is going to say the same. But the r, do we have an r? Do we have a radius? Yeah, in the circle, we have it right there. I circled it in red. That's hard to see, but it's a 3. So I'm going to put parentheses, 3 squared. And then we have an H. The H is for the height. Well, what's the height of this cone? Well, it's right there. It's 5. So I'm going to go parentheses, 5. And now we can do some math with this thing, okay? So the order is kind of important, and some things we can change, but we're going to start real quick with always doing the radius squared. So volume is going to equal... One third pi. Let's do the radius squared. Let's do this part right over here, right? That's three squared. That means three times three, gentlemen. And three times three is going to get us nine. I'm going to keep nine in parentheses. And then let's just leave the five that we have. That's the height. Okay. I told you the first part, we definitely want to square the radius first. After this, we got a little bit of uh, room to maybe use some number sense. Now, you can multiply right over here and do nine times five. Or, if you want, you can do the one-third of one of these numbers. If it's easily, if you can get one-third of one of these numbers pretty easily using number sense, that might be a faster way to go. For instance, one-third of nine, you could get that real quick, and that's going to be three, and then you could do three times five, and we can go from there. 
I'm going to multiply first. I think that's kind of just the straight ahead way. We're going to multiply real quick right over here. 9 times 5 real quick. So I'll switch to purple. Volume's going to equal 1 third pi. 9 times 5 is 45. And we're getting pretty close to an answer. I can write that neater. I apologize. 45 and we're getting there. Okay. Now, here's where we're going to do the 1 third. We're going to save the pi symbol. We're going to do that very last. All right, or very last. We're going to do that at the end, okay, at the very end. So we're going to save that part right over there. We're going to do one-third of 45. When we think of one-third of 45, we just want to figure out basically what is 45 divided by 3. Some of y'all probably know this off the top of your heads even. And one-third of 45 is 15. So last thing we can write this down is volume is going to equal pi times 15, all right? Because we did one-third right over there of 45. I apologize. I didn't mean to write that there. And it's 15. So to get our final answer, we just need to multiply 15 times pi. Okay? I'll erase to get us a little space. But essentially, that's 3.14 times 15. All right? And you can write it like that. I'll do the long form. But remember, you can always estimate this. These questions, when we do cone, volume of cone questions, a lot of times they just ask you for an estimated answer or which answer is the closest to. So if you're asked that real quick, remember if we move the decimal over, this is basically 15 times 3, 15 times 3 right over there. And you know 15 times 3 is 45, so I bet our answer is going to be pretty close to 45. Let's double check real quick, all right? I'm going to do this multiplication. 5 times 4 is 20, 0, carry the 2. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 7, 5 times 3 is 15. Cool. Drop a 0 in. All right, let's go 1 times 4. That's 4. 1 times 1 again is 1, and 1 times 3 is 3. Looks like it's going to work out. Let's add it up. 0 and 0 is 0. 7 and 4 is 11. 1 carry the 1. 5 plus 1 is 6, plus another one is 7, and then 3 plus 1 is 4. If we remember to come back two spaces, it's 47.10, which is pretty close to 45. So the answer, the actual answer is 47.10 inches cubed. Remember, you put it in three dimension. But a good estimated answer for this would also be 45. So between 45 and 47, all right? Let's try this tricky one real quick. And again, we're going to do some estimating. So we've got the cone turned the other direction now. We do have a height. We do have a radius, all right? Let's fill in what we have. We know our formula. Volume equals one-third pi r squared times the height. Okay, let's fill in some values in blue. Volume's going to equal, I'm going fast, but I think you got me here. Volume equals one-third pi. The radius is right here. Remember, radius is halfway across. We got it. It's four. So I'm going to put four squared and then times the height. What is the height? The height is right there, guys. It's seven. Okay. So I'm going to put that in there, and I'm going to erase what I did down here so we have some space. Let's do some math. Always start with the radius, right? I told you that. One-third pi. The radius right over here is 4 squared, which is 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16. So let's go with 16 in parentheses times 7, and we should be able to get our answer. Now, Right over here, 16 times 7 or 1 third. We're going to go ahead and multiply 16 times 7, then we'll get 1 third. Um, but that's where you could check also to say, hey, could you get 1 third of either of those numbers and maybe do this a little faster? Anyway, 16 times 7, 7 times 6 is 42. It's a 2, carry a 4. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 4 is 11. So it's 112, all right? So I'm going to go purple here. Volume is going to equal 1 third pi times 112, all right? Let me clear some space. So now is where we're going to, remember, we always do pi last. We'll do that last. So let's get one-third of 112. That's essentially 112 divided by 3, okay? And again, I think we're going to do decimal, so we'll probably estimate this out, but we can do this division real fast. 3 doesn't go into 1. 3 goes into 11 3 times, and 3 times 3 is 9. When we subtract 11 minus 9 is 2, bring down another 2, it's 22. 3 goes into 22 7 times, right? And 3 times 7 is 21. So essentially, we're going to get a 1 remainder, but we're, we're going to stop there. I told you we're going to estimate this out, and we're going to say 37. 37 is where we're at. I'm going to clear some space, 
and we're going to work with this. So I'm going to go in red. I'm going to say volume equals to do our last step. Basically pi, because remember we just got one third of that, pi times, bad parenthesis sign, good parenthesis sign, 37. All right, now this is 3.14 times 37, right, which is, I know, a little kind of long decimal multiplication, which we can do. I'll do real fast. But estimate it again. Always get your estimation done. That's basically 37 times 3. 37 times 3, if you do that real quick, because a lot of these ask for closest answers or estimates. 3 times 7 is 21. You put a 1 and carry the 2. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 2 is 11. Is showing at 111. So we know our answer is going to be around 111. If I do this multiplication on the bottom, 7 times 4 is 28, carry a 2. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 2, 8, 9. And then 7 times 3 is 21. Drop the 0. Second uh, number, which is 3 times 4, that's 12. So I can carry a 1 there. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4, and then 3 times 3 is 9. Let's see if we get close to 111. 8 and 0 is 8. 9 and 2 is 11. Carry the 1. That's 4 plus 1 plus 1, which is 6. And then 9 plus 2 is 11. Remember your decimal places real quick. Essentially, we get 116.18 real quick right over here, and it's in inches cubed. But I would say a pretty solid answer is also this 111 inches cubed. It's okay to be able to estimate, especially this. It's kind of a complicated uh, numbers on this, all right? Last example real quick, just to make sure this hits home real fast on the cone. Uh, this, this one, little extra um, rigor to this or maybe a little tricky spot here. So write your formula down. Volume equals one-third, right? Pi, let me fix that, one-third. Pi r squared times the height. I'm scribbling it in, but I think you got it. We know pi is 3.14. Now, as we rewrite real quick, volume equals one-third. Pi. What is the radius? Well, look, they gave us 4. I see that. But 4 is actually all the way across the base, which is diameter. We want radius, which should be halfway across. Halfway across. Half of 4 is 2. So let's make sure our radius is 2 right there. 2 squared. Make sure you don't get confused or get caught with something like that. All right. Then we're going to multiply that times the height. The regular height is 6. And this one's going to work out, I think, a little bit um, more cleanly, a little bit more direct when we go and do the math real fast. All right, so let's do that. Volume equals one-third, all right, times pi. Let's do this two squared. Always do your radius squared right over here. Two times two is four. Put the six right over there for the height. And now check this out. This is where I would use this strategy. I would say, hey, one-third. You could multiply four times six and get 24, but I'm going to look real quick and say, hey, one-third. Are any of these numbers, 4 or 6, divisible by 3 evenly? Yeah, 6 is. So why don't we do 1 third of 6 real quick? That's basically 6 divided by 3, which is 2. All right? So I'm going to wipe that out. And I'm going to basically say, hey, if we divide and simplify that out, I can go in uh, green, volume equals pi times 4, and then... Remember, we did 6 divided by 3, right? And it was 2. So I get 4 times 2 in there now. And this just makes the math a little bit faster and a little bit more direct. You can work it out a little bit more clean. And, and then I think just gives you some ease, okay? Now, 4 times 2 is what? That's right, it's 8. So let's rewrite. Volume equals pi times 8. And we can get our final answer here. That's going to be this. That's going to be 3.14 times 8. I told you this. I've been saying it. Make sure you remember it. Estimate it. Always estimate it. Most of your, your final solutions are going to be estimated solutions here because of long decimals. So that's basically 3 times 8. And everyone, I think, has got 3 times 8 off the top of their head. You know that 3 times 8 is 24. I know my answer is going to be around 24. Not exactly, but it's going to be around 24. That's helpful, okay? Let's move the decimal out, too, and just double check, all right? 8 times 4, well, that's 32. Put a 2, carry a 3. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 3 is 9, 10, 11. Put a 1, carry a 1. Now, 8 times 3 is 24, plus 1 is 25. I got this big old long number, but remember, we've got to come back two spaces. 
I really have 25.12. Check it out. 25.12 is very close to 24. I know I got it right, okay? So that's going to be centimeters cubed. And honestly, I would say on this, probably in the question, the answer is probably even going to be 24, all right? But make sure you put it in units cubed, estimate it out, do the pi uh, multiplication last, and you're in good shape here. Make sure you got the formula down. Great job with volume of a cone. Real quick, um, making sure that we just one-third using your formulas and that you have this down real quick. We'll get some practice. And then also, remember, exciting news. Most of y'all know. Some of y'all know. But we hit 600 subscribers on the Foster Math. Super excited. Amazing stuff. And um, to the moon and back is what I say.